Street photography is all about timing. And it could be timing like being in the right place at the right time when something interesting is actually happening, but it could also mean being prepared to capture the decisive moment as it unfolds. And the last thing you need is to be fiddling with your focus as the best shot of your life passes you by. So a lot of street shooters take a cue from the olden days and pre-focus their lenses so as much of the frame as possible is in focus all the time. It's called zone focusing and it's super easy to do if you're using a manual focus lens, but a little bit more tricky if you're using an autofocus system like an X100V. As it turns out, I've been shooting zone focus with my X100s since way back in 2013, and I got a few tips to share, so let's get to it. What exactly is zone focus anyway? I think a lot of people misunderstand the concept and think they're supposed to guess the distance to their subject and then set that on their camera, but instead of guessing, the idea is to use depth of field to create a range of focus that includes your subject. It's sort of like casting a big net to catch a little fish, except instead of a net, we're using depth of field, and instead of a fish, we're taking a picture. The good news is you only really need two zones on the street and that makes the whole thing super manageable. But before we get into all of that, let's talk about depth of field and hyperfocal distance. This is the nerdy part of the program, so bear with me. Depth of field is the range of distance within your frame that appears to be in focus and is largely controlled by aperture. The smaller your aperture, the greater your depth of field. But depth of field is also affected by focus distance. You, you know what, I think I need a diagram. To the overhead cam. Here's your camera, here's infinity. It's mountains because mountains are infinite. Let's say you're shooting at F8 and your focus point is here and you have this much depth of field. This in-focus zone slides forward and back with your focus point and depth of field actually expands the farther away you focus. But if you focus too far, your depth of field extends past infinity and gets wasted on an area that's already in focus. The trick here is to balance your aperture and focus distance so that the farthest end of depth of field is just kissing infinity. This is your hyperfocal distance and it produces the maximum range of focus for your aperture. So if you're shooting at F8 on the X100V with its 23 millimeter lens, your hyperfocal distance is about 12 and a half feet. Pre-focus your lens to this distance and everything from about six and a half feet to infinity will be sharp. So pretty much everything I point my camera at is going to be in focus and I'm free to worry about the psychology of the frame just the way it should be. Now, all we need to do is set focus distance on the X100V. There's no getting around it. Setting manual focus distance on the X100V is a pain in the butt. All we have is a manual focus scale in the EVF but it's kind of crap. I mean, it also appears in the LCD if you frame your shots that way, but it's still crap. As you adjust focus, the indicator sort of jumps to arbitrary steps along the scale. And of course, there's no indication of what distance any of these steps are, so that's a dead end. So I reverse engineered the problem and set my camera up exactly 12 and a half feet from the wall, then used AF to lock focus on the edge of the picture frame. This puts the focus indicator exactly one step to the left of 15 on the focus scale, and it's repeatable, so I'm gonna call that 12 and a half feet. I have the control ring on my X100V set to control focus, so I can easily set this distance anytime I like. And remember, we're not shooting wide open for maximum bokeh here. At F8, we've got enough depth of field that minor variations in distance aren't gonna matter. It doesn't matter if your focus indicator's at 15 or one or two steps below or even one step over. It's about being in the zone, and we're definitely there. So I shoot at f8 with my lens set to its hyperfocal distance and that gives me anywhere from about six and a half feet to infinity in focus. But we still need one more zone in case we want to shoot anything closer than that. On my X100V I have my close zone set to four feet and if I'm shooting at f8 that means anything from about three to six feet will be in focus or anything that's like one to two arms length away so it's super easy to remember. All we need is a repeatable way to get to that focus distance. In this case I just use autofocus to move my focus point to a new zone. Fuji cameras let you activate autofocus using back button focus even if you're in manual focus mode, so it's a piece of cake. Now, I set a custom button on the front of my camera to activate AF on because I didn't like the default placement of the focus button on the back, but it does exactly the same thing. Now, if I see an interesting subject coming my way, I just point the camera to the ground and grab focus without even looking at the camera, and I'm ready to go. I'm pretty much at four feet every time I do this. Of course, you're probably a different height than me. It might be three, three and a half, four and a half feet, doesn't matter. As long as it's the same every time, you can predict the results and know where your shot is going to line up. It's not a perfect science, but it'll get you close. And that's it. Zone focus is really about two zones, up close and everything else. And most of the time, you're gonna be in everything else mode where your camera's set to its hyperfocal distance and you just pop into close up every once in a while when you need it. Super easy to manage. So now that you know the how and why, we can talk about how I actually use zone focus on the street. Like I said, it's not about guessing distance. 
as long as my subject is more than about six or six and a half feet away, and that's basically two arms length away, so that's super easy to remember, I can keep my camera set at its hyperfocal distance and shoot knowing everything in the frame is going to be in focus. You see a guy doing a backflip in front of the bank, shoot it, or a nun playing basketball in the park, snap away. Maybe you glance up just in time to see a guy wearing a banana costume walking past a pineapple stand. I mean, it's practically a pina colada, shoot it already. The point is, wherever you point your camera, you're covered, and because there's no focus like there's nothing standing between you and the moment that you're trying to capture. If you're shooting autofocus, you've got to pick a focus point, acquire focus, reframe. By the time you do all that, the banana guy is long gone. The banana guy is split and you missed a perfectly good shot. I, I suppose you could pre-focus on a pineapple stand and wait around hoping that a guy in a banana suit will happen along, but that's just boring. It's not the way I want to work. My best shots come together in an instant and I'm often moving in the opposite direction of my subject. I bring the camera to my eye long enough to make an exposure, then I'm already looking for my next shot. Whether it's a simple tree of subjects crossing the street or shooting at night during a Halloween festival, the world is in motion and I need my camera to respond instantly without even a moment of lag. And for me at least, zone focus is the only way I can accomplish this. So now, what if you can't shoot f8? Zone focus really depends on a large depth of field in order for it to work, and for me, f 8s the way to go. You could shoot at f11 or f16, but most lenses perform best at their middle aperture values, and f8 gives us enough depth of field that it just makes sense. Plus the saying's f8 and be there, it's not f16 and be there. If lighting is an issue, I'll normally jack my ISO and drop my shutter speed so I can keep shooting at f8. If it gets too dark for that, I'll bust out the flash and keep shooting at f8. If you're shooting indoors and f8 just isn't possible, you can always go back to the hunt and peck style of shooting where you use AF to acquire focus before every shot. I hate it, but it's better than not shooting at all. And really, that never comes up with the way I shoot. I'm more of an outdoors kind of guy, so it doesn't really affect me. I don't know how you would zone focus with a narrow depth of field indoors. I think you'd have to be some kind of psychic voodoo priestess in order for it to work. And I am neither of those things. Let, let's be honest, zone focusing works best with a manual focus lens, like the ones they have on the fancy schmancy Leica systems. But there's nothing stopping you from using these same techniques on the X100V. You just have to jump through a few hoops to make it happen. The reality is for 95% of the shots I take, I just keep the camera set to its hyperfocal distance and shoot with impunity. The odd time when someone comes really close and I want to shoot, I point to the ground, lock focus, and take my chances. It's not exactly an elegant solution, but it works. And it gives me the confidence to walk through the world knowing my camera is pre-focused and ready to capture any moment that happens in front of my lens. No fiddling required. So what do you guys think about zone focus? Is this something you're gonna try? Or are you perfectly happy using autofocus and never give it a second thought? Post your ideas in the comments below. I love hearing the way that you guys work on the street. And as always, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers and I'd love to have you along for the ride. I got some cool videos in the pipe and I'd hate for you to miss any of them. But for now, I'm Carl from Street Shooter and that's enough of me. Now get out there and take some pictures already. Just make sure you zone focus because it's better. Because E.T. zone home? No? Zonus Brothers? I got a million of them.